I will go to 2023. In part one of I will go, we learned that we can all do something. We can all do something for the Lord. If we give 100% of our God-given abilities, we can all do something for the Lord. If we give 100% of what God has given to us to advance his kingdom. And today we will learn that there is nothing that can stop us from doing something good for the Lord and for ourselves and for the church, except ourselves. There's nothing that can stop us from doing good for the kingdom of God except ourselves. Now, allow me to suggest, brothers and sisters, that doing good is a second nature of good people. Doing good is what? A second nature to good people. Someone might say, Pastor, the Bible says there's no one who is good except God. I want to suggest that we can all do something good for God, for others, and for ourselves. Yes, there is no one who is good except God, but Jesus makes us good, and he also enables us to do good. The Bible tells us of a young lady who could not allow the prevailing circumstances stop her from doing something good. In the passage that was read so very well by Terry the Third, wow, I was saying to myself, I need to be careful here. Terry is going to be the next pastor of Raja Kukamanga. That was so wonderful. I mean, even this pulpit could not stop Terry from doing what he wanted to do for the Lord. He had to make sure that there is a stool here that would lift him up so that he can do the work for God. There is nothing that can stop you from doing anything for God. Terry showed it today that even the length of this podium could not stop Terry from doing what he wants to do for the Lord. In the passage that he read so very well, which is recorded in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, allow me to read this passage once again in your hearing. The Bible says, Now Naaman, was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The Lord gave victory to the king. However, the Bible says, he was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. You know, brothers and sisters, life has a way <laughs> of reminding us that in spite of all the successes we may have, we are still incomplete. Life has a way of teaching us that in spite of our long resumes, in spite of all our achievements, and in spite of all our abilities, there is something that is not complete in our lives. And that's why 
we need Jesus Christ. We are always God's work in progress. Life reminds us that in spite of all the accolades that we may have in our lives, we are still God's work in what? In progress. God is not yet finished working in us. Naaman had all these accolades, but there was still something that was not right. Happy are those who realize that they still have to deal with some form of leprosy in their lives. God would like us to, remind, to remember all the time that in spite of the good health, in spite of the successes that we have, we still have to deal with some leprosy in our lives. Verse 2, the Bible says, Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. And she saved Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Brothers and sisters, allow me to suggest as we enjoy this worship service today that this maid, with her name not mentioned because she wasn't important, her name not mentioned or recorded in the Bible, her name lost to history but became a great example of forgiveness and compassion. A great example of faith and a symbol of goodness. When an opportunity to do something good, in spite of her status and in spite of the recipient, she did that which was good. Because doing good is a second nature to all good people. When we find it so difficult to do good to anyone, to say something good about everyone, or to wish everyone good, maybe it is because we ourselves are struggling with being good. Though her name is never mentioned or recorded in the annals of history, it's not recorded in the who is who of this world. I am convinced that in the eternal records of heaven, her name is recorded in bold letters as an icon of unconditional goodness. She will always be remembered as a woman who loved the Lord with all her heart and loved her neighbor as herself. She will always be remembered as a young girl who refused her personhood, which I would call in my language Ubuntu. She is a young woman who refused her personhood to be determined by the prevailing circumstances. She understood where she was. She understood her limitations. She understood her pain. She understood her misfortunes. But she could not allow her circumstances to determine who she was. Ubuntu Bake. Her personhood. Let us try to break down this passage a little bit to get a proper perspective on how the prevailing conditions could have made it difficult for this young girl to do something good. With hope that 
we will put ourselves in his shoes and be able to learn an example that will encourage us as Christians in 2023 to wish to do something good in spite of our situations. Number one, this young lady, she was a young slave girl. Allow me to suggest, brothers and sisters, especially to the young members of the church and those who are under the sound of my voice. Allow me to suggest that doing good for God and for others has no age limit. Amen? Doing good for God and for others has no age limit has no respect of age or has no respect of gender. You don't need to wait until you get old in order to save God. You can do something at your early age. You can do something for God. You can do something for your community. You can do something for the church in spite of your age and in spite of your gender. You can do something. Doing good has no respect of age and gender. You can sing. You can pray. You can give someone water. You can distribute flyers. You can invite a friend to church. You can just say hello. You can be an usher. There is something for everybody. Anyone who wants to do good has a place in the kingdom of God. You can do something good for the church, even in your early childhood. Number two, the Bible tells us that she was taken away from her country. Away from her community and family. She lost all her privileges. She had no phone privileges. No sleepovers. No going to school. Working 24-7 without pay or a thank you handshake. No personal space. No privacy or freedom of association. Huh? Can you relate ourselves? To that situation. Ha, ah, no cell phone. Can you spend that day without a cell phone? Going through on your cell phone. Hmm? She had lost all these privileges as a young girl. Sometimes life's challenges, brothers and sisters, can place us in a situation of great deprivation socially, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And yet, even in those situations, like this young slave girl, we can still do something good for the Lord. We can still do something good for the community. We can still do something good for the church. We can still do something good for someone else in spite of all these, those limitations. Like, a young, like this young girl, we can still do something for the Lord. For the song that we sang today says, while the souls of men are dying, and the master calls for you, let none hear your idle saying, there is nothing I can do. We can do something for the Lord in 2023. In 2023. Number three, the Bible says she had lost her identity, her name, her language, and freedom of worship. She became a stranger in a strange land, and yet she kept and lived her faith that she was taught by her parents. 
She knew who she was and whose she was. Brothers and sisters, let us never allow life's challenges change who we are and whose we are. We are Seventh-day Adventist Christians and we are God's children and we are members of the family of God. That's who we are and that's whose we are. Number four, she had all the reasons to be angry, depressed, vindictive, mean, and rebel against God and lose her faith. But this young lady, she believed in the word of God, which says that, which says that, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Wow. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will. She understood that, that in all circumstances where we find ourselves in, let us give thanks to God because while we are in those circumstances, we are not alone. God is with us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And then in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Bible reminds us that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purposes. This young lady understood that, that not some things, but all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. While God is not happy seeing us in challenging situations of life, the truth remains that he is with us in those situations. He is working in us something good, and he expects us to do something good even in those situations. You and I, brothers and sisters, can do something good for God, for his church, and for others, and even for ourselves. Number five, the Bible says that Naaman was sick with leprosy. Naaman was sick with leprosy. God has placed us around people who are in need. God has placed each one of us with Naaman's of our time. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes you say, man, I'm not a slave. I'm in the land of the free. <laughs> but God has placed us around people who are in need like the Nemans. There is sickness, brothers and sisters, all around us. Do you believe that? There is sickness around us. We have six spouses, six spouses, <laughs> six children, six students, Sick clients, sick church members, <laughs> sick siblings, friends who are sick, classmates who are sick, bosses who are sick, neighbors who are sick, subordinates who are sick, and pastors who are sick, elders who are sick, deacons who are sick. Parents who are sick, professors who are sick, the list is endless. God has placed us among sick people. Sometimes not physically sick, but sick with sin. They are sick not of leprosy, 
but of sin. Allow me, brothers and sisters, to suggest that being near them is not a coincidence, but a providence. Being associated with a sick spouse, with a sick pastor, with a sick elder, with a sick member, with a sick daughter, with a sick son, with a sick grandparent, with a sick father, with a sick husband, with a sick wife, is not a coincidence, but a providence. Just like that young slave girl, you and I can and must do something good. We can tell them that there is a prophet who is in Samaria who would cure them of their sin and his name is Jesus. We can tell them that the great physician now is here, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the dropping heart to cheer. Your many sins are all forgiven. His name dispels our guilt and fear. No other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the charming name of Jesus. We can tell them that. Number six. The location of a prophet is important. The prophet was able, the prophet who was able to cure Naaman was in Samaria. Not everywhere or anywhere. Those who seek healing of their sins need to be directed and invited to church where they will find Jesus and the great physician. Let us all make it our duty to invite someone to church every Sabbath and let us be found in church on every Sabbath for healing of our sins. Number seven, she came to learn about what others would have considered as God's answered prayer. She learns that the very person who was responsible for all his sufferings, finally himself was suffering from an incurable disease called leprosy. This young lady, instead of praising the Lord for punishing this evil man, instead of saying finally his sins is caught up with him, the Bible tells us that she did something good. She went to her mistress, the wife of Naaman, and said, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of leprosy. Brothers and sisters, this young girl, she had the opportunity to revenge she had the opportunity to hide the life-saving information and watch her master's limbs decaying and falling off one by one in pieces. However, this girl chose to do something good for her enemy. Brothers and sisters, in this year, 2023, we have been given a chance to do something good to those who might have tried to destroy our hopes, those who have tried to shatter our dreams, those who have tried to extinguish our faith and prevent our spiritual growth. This year, 2023, we have been given a chance to do something good in the building of the kingdom of God in our communities. Something good in our workplaces. Something good at schools. Something good at churches and homes. We need to pray that the Lord of harvest will show us what we can do for him, for his church, for our communities, and even for ourselves. Through acts of kindness, through our generosity, through our positive influence, 
through our time, we can introduce someone to the, a prophet in Samaria, Jesus Christ. For it is a second nature of a good person to do good. Okay. There was a man by the name of Chance Given. What a name. Chance given. So what happened was that I was out on, on mission work. So my family stayed home, and in the evening, there was a knock at the door. And so when they went to ask who was knocking at the door, they heard a male voice on the other side. And he identified himself as, my name is Chance Given. What a name. Well, I like the name itself. Well, they did not open the door because they didn't know what type of chance that was given to the stranger. But allow me to suggest, brothers and sisters, that you and I know the chance that has been given to us. We have been given a chance to do something good in 2023. It is a chance to do something good to advance the cause of God's kingdom this year. A chance has been given to do better than the past years in our walk with God. A chance to do something good for that mean neighbor. A chance to do something good for that teacher, that professor, that leader, etc., etc. A chance has been given to us to pray more, fast more, praise more, help more, and love you more. Let us become the chance given and tell the world that Jesus is coming again. And tell the world that this world will soon be destroyed by fire. And tell the world that our redemption draweth nigh. And tell the world that Jesus loves them. God has given us a chance to do something good this year. Yes, the song says, Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Who will go and work today? Fields are white and harvest waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Loud and long the master calleth. Which reward he offers free? Who will answer gladly saying, Here am I, Lord, send me. If you cannot cross the ocean and the heathen lands explore, you can find heathen nearer. You can help them at your door. If you cannot speak like angels and if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot be the watchman standing high on Zion's wall, pointing out the path to heaven, offering life and peace to all with your prayers and with your bounties, you can do what heavens demand. You can be like faithful Aaron, holding up the prophet's hand. While the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you, let none hear you idly saying, there is nothing I can do. Gladly take the task he gives you. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he calleth. Here am I, O Lord, send me.
like that slave girl, you and I can do something for the Lord this year. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us once again in 2023 that circumstances prevailing around us, there are opportunities for us to save you. If that young girl could do something in a strange land, how much more with us in the land of the free. Lord, I pray that this year, in this community of Rancho Cucamonga, every young person and every adult will find himself and herself doing something for the Lord. For you have blessed us with sick people, people who need salvation, at school, in our communities, everywhere around the streets. Help us, Lord, to do something good this year for the Lord. Now as we leave this place, as we leave the portals of this building, create an opportunity for each one of us to do something good today, this week, this month, and this year. For we have prayed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining our worship service. If you like our content, please click the like button and consider subscribing. You can also check our other videos on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to visit our church. The address is in the description below. We hope to see you there. Bye.